there and uh, he organized the Philippine Constabulary. Well, everybody knows uh, General John Pershing, who also became eventually Chief of Staff of the U.S. Army, but he served here also, uh, starting in uh, 1899. Pershing was appointed Adjutant General of his department and served this posting until March 1, 1901. And uh, according to the stories, it was during his time here in the Philippines when the caliber 45 pistol was uh, invented in order to design a pistol that would have enough energy to stop the charge of uh, a Muslim warrior. That was how much they respected a Muslim warrior during that time. And another prominent, of course, the first uh, uh, Filipino West Pointer, General Vicente Lim, USMA 14. Uh, for you who are not familiar with the history of General Vicente Lim, the first West Pointer, class 14, he was commissioned second lieutenant under the Philippine Scouts. By 1940, he was appointed to the post of Chief of Staff of the Philippine Army. He led uh, the 41st uh, Division uh, and figured very prominently in the Battle of Bataan uh, as the head of the Philippine, uh, the 41st Division of the Philippine Army. On April 9, 1942, uh, the 41st surrendered in Bataan, along with all American and Philippine forces, uh, and uh, he was uh, uh, captured, admitted to the Philippine General Hospital, joined uh, the guerrilla forces, but unfortunately was captured in 1944 when he attempted to rejoin General Douglas MacArthur in Australia. He was confined in the Bilibet prison, and shortly before the end of the Second World War, he was executed by the Japanese, a real martyr and hero, General Vicente Lim, West Point, class of, 18, of 1914. And the first uh, USNA graduate, the first Filipino, Second Lieutenant Jose Emilio Olivares, USNA class of 23. Well, he was not as famous as uh, General Vicente Lim, but he also served, he served uh, uh, in the guerrilla forces, he spent 14 months in a Japanese prison after being arrested by the Kempitai. And very fortunately, he survived the war and uh, transferred to the United States. And now, for the most famous West Pointer in the Philippines, and probably one of the most famous West Pointers in the history of uh, that academy, General Douglas MacArthur, USMA 03, 1903. He was recalled to active duty in 1941 as commander of the U.S. Armed Forces in the Far East. A series of disasters followed, starting with the destruction of his Air Force on December 8, 1941, and then the invasion of the Philippines by the Japanese. MacArthur's forces were soon compelled to withdraw to Bataan, where they held out until May 1942. In March 1942, General MacArthur his family and his staff left Corridor Island in PT boats carried by the U.S. Navy, by Navy, and escaped to Australia, where MacArthur became Supreme Commander, Southwest, Southwest Pacific Area. For his defense in the Philippines, MacArthur was awarded the Medal of Honor. After more than two years of fighting in the Pacific, he fulfilled a promise to return to the Philippines. General Douglas MacArthur, USMA 03. And then, of course, the fall of uh, Bataan. On the 11th of March, the already suffering troops received another blow to their morale when General MacArthur evacuated the Philippines for the safety of Australia. The United States felt they could not lose such a significant figure to the Japanese. So Roosevelt ordered MacArthur to leave the Philippines, and MacArthur reluctantly did so. When MacArthur finally did leave Corregidor, he promised to the men on Bataan that he would return. That is the famous, I shall return. The U.S. War Department turned over command of the Philippines to General Jonathan Wainwright, who in turn placed General Edward King in charge of the 75,000 men on Bataan. Now, uh, they mentioned General Jonathan Wainwright, 
another West Pointer, class of 06, 1906, following the relocation of MacArthur to Australia to serve as Allied Supreme Commander, Southwest Pacific, Wainwright inherited the uninviable position of Allied Commander in the Philippines. Also that March, Wainwright was promoted to Lieutenant General. And he was the one who presided over the surrender of uh, the Philippine forces to the Japanese. Uh, the Bataan surrendered under the command of Major General Edward King. On May 5, the Japanese attacked Corregidor. And on May 6, in the interest of minimizing casualties, Wainwright surrendered. The army was losing heavily during this time. And the Navy came in to save the day. Then came a USNA graduate, class 05, Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz. He was the one who, who, who was in command of uh, the US forces in the Pacific that led to the Battle of Midway and the victory in the Battle of Midway. Of course, there are other Naval Academy personalities in the Battle of Midway, and the most prominent was Admiral Raymond Spruance, class of 06, US Naval Academy. During two of the most significant naval battles in the Pacific Theater, the Battle of Midway and the Battle of the Philippine Sea, Spruans commanded U.S. naval forces during these battles. The, the Battle of Midway was the first major victory for the United States over Japan and is seen by many as the turning point in the Pacific War. And now we see the meeting of two great uh, personalities, one a West Point graduate, another an Annapolis graduate. Chester Nimitz, commanding Central Pacific Operations, and Douglas MacArthur, commander in the Southwestern Pacific. Then again, another Navy victory, because the Army could not walk on water. They had to be helped by the Navy. So again, once again, the Navy